This is the ShutEye app. You can download it for your phone or your tablet and it's basically an introduction to sleep study material that you can get at your home. It gives you all kinds of different indicators. We're going to dive into it. And we're also going to compare it to a wearable sleep apparatus for infants called the Owlet Dream Sock. And then as a third, we'll compare it to actual sleep study results all for the same person and see what it shows. I'm not a doctor. These are just my opinions and observations. Seek medical advice if you're having trouble. So the ShutEye app itself you can download. It goes on your phone or a tablet. It has no invasive attachments so there's no need to have like anything attached to you. There's no Bluetooth connection. It's just running on your phone. It runs on your phone or your tablet I should say. And it gathers sleep data. It's worth saying that you don't want to create a safety hazard with your device or the charging cable power cord that it's connected to overnight. So put your device on a nightstand or away from the bed. In the case of a small child, put it up on a bookshelf so they can't get to the power cord or the device. But in any case, don't put the device or the power cord in the bed because that could have serious safety risks including injury and even death. So be careful with that. Keep it out of the bed while you're sleeping. So you basically, before you go to bed, you plug in your phone or tablet where this is installed and you start a sleep session before you fall asleep and you let it track all night. Now it is a service, so it doesn't cost anything to download the app, but then to actually get the results, you have to sign up for either the one month plan, whatever current promotion is. This was at the time of recording. They had a six month promotion or you can get the three month version or the premium, which is basically you're paying the least amount of money per month, but it's a year commitment. When you wake up in the morning, you just say quit tracking. I'm done sleeping for the day and start to look at your results. You can see effectively on the screen, a score at the top left. And it tells you on the right of that when you fell asleep and when you woke up. So what amount of time that your total duration of attempted sleep was. The graph will indicate when you had nice deep sleep closer to the bottom where the line is blue that's the deeper sleep and up on the top where it's green that's the lighter sleep. So you can see in some cases the graph shows a very strong return to being awake like in this example. So that means the deep sleep was interrupted and the person woke up and was wide awake for that period of time. And the examples I have in common is that the deep sleep here in this person is actually occurring at the beginning of the night and that gradually as the night goes on beyond midnight they're slowly becoming more awake. Here's one where the deep sleep occurred only for a short instant and then the person was more or less in very light sleep for the entire night more or less. So you start to get an idea that has a lower overall score. You can see 51 with an orange half circle, which means it wasn't a very healthy sleep. And just comparing a few more nights worth of data, you can see there's something incredibly constant in that the first drop off, the deepest sleep occurs right after the first drop off and the person is slowly waking up or getting into the lighter sleep. Uh, mode, which means they're not getting that good deep sleep, which is your restorative sleep and your sleep that helps you, it helps your immunity, it helps you fight diseases and all, all good things happen in that really deep sleep. So then if you go down and scroll down a little bit and look at the sleep stages, you can see in the trends at the bottom that you're awake, you know, for the last seven reports, your awake time, it's going to tell you how long you were awake, one hour and 58 minutes for the last seven reports. So it's kind of like in an in average time you were awake between the beginning and the end of your sleep uh, window that you had set up for your fall asleep to wake up being the start and the end. And you can start to see basically that you're having sleep interruptions. What's nice about the app is beyond that, because it's really just dealing with audio information. You can see the noise levels and you can see what it cataloged as snoring as well. Now what it does beyond that is things that your phone and tablet can measure. The humidity in the area that night, the pressure outside, so it gives you an idea if your sleep is affected by weather, uh, temperature, and things like that. 
it's really it's really helpful because it's giving you a lot of it's trying to correlate a lot of data without being invasive or having you wear uh, a bunch of wire you know a bunch of sleep monitoring uh, equipment on you which is kind of uh, really a nice thing so you can see you spent 46 percent of last night in light sleep this light sleep is it's a nice be able to tell you a way of seeing that you know you're sleeping but it's not the kind of deep restorative sleep we mentioned earlier and you can go back uh, pretty far in terms of trending you can do it by the days the weeks the month or view everything all together and that'll give you an idea if you actually use this over time it'll give you an idea of how you're improving or, or how things in your life as changes occurred might have affected your sleep it does like to tell you people your age around the world, how you compare to them. Um, that's kind of a novelty. It's really not going to help you uh, sleep. It's just an interesting thing. So if we can compare this to the Owlet Sock, which is an, an infant-based 0-18 to 18 months attachment that works wirelessly and communicates back to a base station, it monitors like a pulse ox on your child's foot and it does a bunch of sleep analysis inside the Owlet sleep app. You can see here there's the sensor right there and the sensor basically comes off the sock and you can wash the sock and then you put the sensor back on. Um, but the the, advantage of the the advantages of this is the health data is, is much more personal. So it's tracking, like I said, you know, it's measuring your uh, child's blood oxygen level and it's measuring pulse it's like a pulse oximeter um, if I'm pronouncing that right but the the drawback is with this is that you have to arrange it just right uh, keep it charged and actually attach it to your child's foot for sleeping but a quick overview of, of this being the next level up is what I would call it, is that it's basically going to evaluate in the same way if it was peaceful or if it was the child was too active during sleep. So it's going to give you a little more direct data and give you the same kind of analysis. The third option that you can do is a sleep lab, and that's really when your physician prescribes it. Um, you're going to have to probably get insurance preclearance if you have insurance and it's an overnight stay in a sleep lab, typically speaking. And what they did in our case is basically we got a report afterwards saying that yes, the, the same person who we just showed the data for on the app and on the Owlet monitor, the same person has uh, wakes up 4.9 or so times an hour. Uh, they didn't have noticeable apnea, but they had problems staying asleep and they didn't have restless limb syndrome, but they had uh, you know frequent movement. So it was interesting because I feel like that correlated to what we saw in the trends on the Shut Eye app uh, well before we went to the doctor and and fought to get the sleep study. So the sleep study is way more data because you're getting tons of data than either of the first two things we talked about. But what is nice about it is that it shows you how the Shut Eye app can actually give you a little bit of an insight into um, sleep difficulties without having to go through the entire uh, sleep study. Um, so that's that's just an idea. It, it's not the the best thing in the world, and if you're having issues, contact your doctor. But if you want a glimpse into what's going on, a glimpse is what the Shut Eye app will give you and it'll give you patterns of data over time, which is also very, very helpful from a different angle versus um, some of the other things we talked about here. I'm not a doctor. These are just my opinions and observations. Seek medical advice if you're having trouble. If you found this helpful, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button to be notified when more come out like this. Thanks again for watching.